Hi guys, this is Shweta Shah from Alien Brains and the Lead Machine Learning Mentor over here. In this particular video, we'll be looking at another Python automation project and this time we'll be working with Instagram. So what we are going to do, we are going to create a bot which is going to automatically like any post, any latest post by our favorite person on Instagram. Okay, so let's uh, see if I have to manually do it, what will be my steps so that we can replicate them on our project. Okay, so let this Come here. The first thing I have to do is I have to open Instagram, right? So let me just write Instagram.com. Now, once I open the Instagram page, the first thing happens here, I have to log in, right? For that, I have to come here and I give uh, I have to give my email or phone number or username, whatever, with whatever you want to log into. So let me just give my username over here. Now, after giving the username, I will, I'm sorry, my password, uh, I'm sorry, my mail ID, after that, I have to give my password, right? So let me quickly do that. And once these two things are done, I'll be have to I'll be uh, needing to click the login button so that it logs me in Instagram. Now let's just wait for a couple of seconds. Yeah, I have been logged in. Now this profile I have created newly. I mean, just a demo profile to do stuff related to Instagram that is like is completely blank. And these kind of things is, things are appearing. Now let's not get into that. Now once logged in. We can directly go to the profile of the person uh, we are interested in. So let me quickly, uh, let's do one thing. Let's search someone, okay? Yeah. So once that kind of thing has appeared, we can directly copy and paste this particular link so that this particular page opens automatically. Now, once this page has opened, what I have to do, I have to check whether I have liked Vicky Kaushal's latest post or not. If not, I'll be liking this. So, for that, I have to open this post, right? Now, once opened, what I have to do, I have to check whether I have already liked it or not. By looking at this page, you can clearly say that I have not already liked it. That is because this is not red. This like button turns red whenever someone likes any post. Okay. So, let's say if I like it. So, see, there is a change created on the page. The color has changed. That means the moment I like a post, I mean, before the moment I like a post and after the moment I like any post, some kind of structural changes occur in the page. Right? So, what we have to do, we have to take care of this thing. Once in my coding, I'll be checking if there is a structural change in the code or not. If yes, then that means the post has been liked. I'll just move out of the code. If not, I'll be liking the post by clicking this one. Okay. So now let's just get into the coding without waiting and wasting any more time. And let me just jot down all the steps which we have to follow in order to fulfill the task. Now, the first step I have to do is open Google, right? This is the first thing we need to do. After that, I will have to open Instagram's login page, right? Once that is done, I have to uh, give my email after that i have to give my password and after that i have to give i'm sorry i have to click on login button now with the help of these five steps i will be logged into my profile after that open link of the target person okay whoever profile you want to check you can open the link of that person from here after that, what you have to do, you have to open latest post. Okay. After that, you have to check if already liked. If I've already liked, you'll just come out of the code. And if not, then I'll be liking it, right? So for that, like by clicking the button. And this will happen if it is not already liked. Okay. So these are the uh, how many? Five, six, seven, eight, nine steps uh, following which we will be able to accomplish the task. Okay. So let me first of all save this file. I want to save it in my default user. Now let's name this profile tracker. Okay. You can name it anything. Uh, profile tracker dot TV. Okay. Let us take this. So now let us start with our first step, which is opening Google. So you know, for this, we'll be using Selenium. What is Selenium? Selenium is an automation library of Python, which helps us in writing commands, which can access any element on the internet, right? So I'll have to import Selenium. So from Selenium, import web driver. This is the module which we will be using. 
Now, to do anything on the internet, Selenium needs to have a connection with the internet, and that connection can be built using Chrome driver. Now, Chrome driver is a web driver. If you're using Firefox, you will need another web driver. If you're using Opera, you will be needing another web driver. So for me, because I'll be using Google Chrome, I will have to use web, uh, Chrome driver. So let me create an instance of the Chrome driver, webdriver.chrome. And here, I have to pass the Chrome driver I already have. Now, Selenium, Chrome driver, all these things need to be downloaded or installed in your device, which I'm not doing in this video. I've already posted another video of mine where I have shown where how can you download Sublime or Selenium or Chrome driver or these kind of things. So I will be linking that video in the description box. You can check that video to understand how I downloaded and installed all the dependencies. Okay. So for now, this particular line will be opening a new uh, Chrome page for me, a Chrome tab for me. So let's just give it a name. You can give it any other name. I'm just giving the name browser. Okay. It is just like a variable name. So you can put anything. Just put something meaningful so that you remember what was the name of the variable. Now, let me just run this to see if it is opening Google or not. So, this is my first task. Yeah, it is opening Google. Now, my second task is... Now, my second task is to open Instagram's login page, right? So, let me quickly get the link of the page. Okay. So, let's... Yeah, uh, to here. So, let me just get the link of this page. So, we know that if we have not already... Uh, logged in this opening this particular link will be taking me to the login page so let me try to open this link from my browser for that i will have to use another function called get so browser browser dot get over here opens any url we provide here as an argument okay so now let me just run this and see if it is opening the login page or not yeah it is opening the login page now once the login page is being opened i have to see now, what is my next step to give the username? Now, to give the username, I have to see how this particular user box is stored in the code. So, every page, every web page, whatever you open, has an HTML code, which is nothing but all the elements of this page in the code form, okay, which is holding all the elements. So, I have to check how this particular box is stored in the code so that I can send some information here. So, let me just do that quickly. Uh, to check that, you have to right-click and you have to inspect. So here, if you see, this is actually an input box and there are different, I mean, there is, this is an input element and there are different attributes like area label, match length, name, class, etc, etc. So I have to do something so that I can tell my code to find this particular input element with let's say name equals to username. Okay. Now to do this, I will have to use the function find element by name. Okay. There are other ways of doing it as well, but for now, I'm going to use this particular function. So we are in the next step and here I have to go to the browser and I have to use the function find element by name. So this function finds the element by, uh, I mean, finds the element with the given name you're going to provide here as an argument. So for that, I'll have to check. Uh, let me just zoom in a bit if, in case you're not able to see. Now, in case you missed it, I clicked on this particular button and then I clicked on this particular box. So that the particular element, I mean, the particular code for the element has been highlighted here. Now, this thing over here is an input element and the name is username. So, I'll just double click here at top of username and just copy it from there. Okay. Now, I'll just paste it here so that it finds the element from it. Okay. Now, let us give some name to the element. Let's give ubox. Ubox means where the username is given, right? And let's write... I mean, let's just try to print the U box so that we can see what it is returning. Let me just run this quickly. Okay, it is giving us an error. Uh, let's see what is the error. The error is no such element exception. Now, this can be caused by two reasons. One reason there is no such element whose, uh, whose part, uh, name is username, and there can be another reason. The another reason can be that when this page has been loaded. Sometimes it happens, it takes a minute or two, um, I'm sorry, a second or two to load all the content of the page, right? If there is a network issues or there is a latency problem or whatsoever. Now, if the page is not loaded, before that, if uh, the browser, I mean, if my code tries to find any element on the browser, of course, the element is not present there and the code will be throwing an error. Now, one way of escaping this is holding, 
uh, whenever you open a new page, hold your code for a while. So let's say if I open this page, let's put a sleep of two seconds. So what is this uh, type? Type is actually a Python library, which is a, a built-in library which handles things related to date and time. Now this kind of sleep too, what it will be doing when your code will skip. In Python, the code runs line by line. It executes line by line. So when the execution will come up at the line seven, it will hold the execution at that line for two seconds and then let it go to like eight, line eight, nine, ten, and like that. So it is generally used for creating some uh, holds during the running of the program. Okay, so now let me try to do run the same so that I can see if it is running fine or not. Okay, so this has appeared. The page has opened and I think something has been printed out. Let me show you. So this kind of a thing is printed out. Now if you're looking at this, it will not make any sense to us. Why? Because this is a selenium element. Okay, so this is a reference or an object of selenium element. So we cannot, uh, some, no, nothing practical or nothing understandable can be printed out from here. But the good news is that we have found this element. Now the next thing what we have to do is, we have to send our username to this particular uh, place, right? For that, what I'll be doing, I'll be just saving my username and my password at the top of my code in a variable. And instead of passing the username and, and password as a string, I just pass those particular uh, variables over here. Okay, so let me do that quickly. Okay, so we are back here. We I have saved the password and username. Now, what I have to do, I have to pass the username to this box. For that, we will be using another function called send keys. Okay, so I have to write ubox dot send keys. And here, what is my uh, email ID saved as? I just pass that variable. Now, this will be sending my email ID to this particular box. Okay, now let me try and run this and see if this works. If this works fine, that means I can move to my next part, which is doing the same thing, but with the password. Okay, so here you can see my email has been sent over here. Let me just close this and let's see how the box of password has been stored so that we can do the same for that as well. So over here, let me just take this button and come to this password. So this password is also an input and the name of this box is password, right? So I'll just copy the same code here. Okay. Fine. Now let's name it tbox for password box tbox and I'll be sending my password. Other thing I have to change the name so that my program becomes able to find this element. For that, let's see what is the name. The name is password only, so I just copy it from there. Now, why do I always copy such simple things as well? Because it is a good practice. Let's say there are some spaces. If you type, if you see and type things, might be there are some hidden spaces which you didn't notice or something. And if you give the wrong name or wrong X path or wrong ID, whatever, then it may collapse your program, right? That is why it is always good to copy the things we want to Okay. Now, let me just see if it works fine till here or not. If it does, my next task is going to be to click on the login button. So let us see. Yeah, these two things are going there. Now I have to see how this login button is stored. Okay, so let's just come here and check this login button. See, right now this login button is actually not visible. So let me just give random values here. So that, uh, yeah, now this login button is visible. Now we can check how this was stored. So this was actually a div element with a given class. Okay, so, okay, this is actually a button element with a given class. Now what I can do now, I can use the X part of this particular element. What is XPath? XPath is like an address. An address used to locate an element in an HTML file. Using this XPath, your code can access this any particular element which uh, XPath will be password. So how do we write XPath? You have to give two slashes, then you have to give the name of the element, then you have to give square bracket, then you have to write at the rate, then you have to write name of any of the attributes. So let's say if you're using button and if you're using the class, you have to write class equals the value of the attribute. Now, why do we do so? Let's say if I'm using a button. There might be 10 other button elements in the code, right? So if I just say that find me a button element, it may return me a wrong button element. Hence, it is important to mention an attribute. Let's say uh, find me a button element whose class is this particular thing, right? So this makes the search easier and more accurate. So after doing this, your XPath will be completed. So according to the syntax I've written, what will the XPath to this particular button element? The XPath will be double slashes, 
button square bracket at the rate class equal to whatever the value is. I'm not writing this whole long value. Okay. So now let me try to put the same thing in my code. So over here, let's say button equals to let me write the x part first. Okay. So double slashes button element and after that at the rate and let me just come here now once if you triple if you click here three times it will copy everything right from class to everything so let me just paste it over here like this okay now this is gonna go inside as a string so now the function we will be using to find this element is find element by x part Earlier we have used find element by name. Now we'll be using find find element by x part. So I'll have to write browser dot find element by sorry by x part like this. Okay. And what I have to do once this element has been found, I just have to click on this one. Okay. Once click on once uh, clicked on this one, what we will be doing? We'll be moving ahead and try to open the page in which we enter. So just run this and see if it is working the way it is supposed to. Yeah, it clicked on it and it has opened. Like it has uh, let me in the Instagram. Okay, so this is the part one of the video. In the second part, we'll be doing the remaining stuff which we are yet to do. So. Kindly continue from the second video. Thank you.